So I've been thinking a lot about art lately. Oh, have you? Uh, how much do you know about art? Seven. You know seven arts? I know seven arts. When were you first exposed to art? <laughs> I do believe it would have been early if, if... Like, do you remember your first conscious exposure to art? I was in Paris and I saw the Mona Lisa for the first time. It's so underwhelming, isn't it? It's so underwhelming and I didn't like it at all. And I actually Googled, why is this popular? But then I found a sculpture outside and I was like, now that I like. And that was when I learned that I like sculptures. I agree with you wholeheartedly on the Mona Lisa. I was very excited to go to Le Louvre mm -hmm. and see the lady in question. And it is such an overwhelmingly disappointing experience. You get yeah. into the big room, it's packed with people, yeah. the painting is like this big. <laughs> And I'm just like, why Why are we all watching this? Who decided that this is the epitome of painting? It's one of those things, you know how you, there's things that it's like, it's popular because it's popular. I feel like that's the Mona Lisa where it makes sense that it would have been something amazing of the time because it was so realistic. But now there's so much more realist art in the world that this is more like a moment in time that only people that truly care about the craft should know about this abstract. This was a turning point in artist. But because it's popular, it just stays popular rather than just being that niche thing that people who care about that thing know about. My earliest conscious exposure to art was watching an infamous, uh, infamous is the wrong word, that makes it sound a bit like a pedophile was in charge, oh. was this famous Australian <laughs> children's TV show called Mr. Squiggle. <gasps> What? Wait, he was a marionette? Mr. Squiggle has gone through a ton of different iterations. Like This show literally ran for 40 years from the 1960s all the way up to the end of the 90s. Wow. It's literally Australia's longest running TV show. That's amazing. And the premise is that Mr. Squiggle is a man from the moon with a pencil nose. And so children would send in their squiggles and then Mr. Squiggle would turn them into a recognizable drawing. And it would be your job to guess what the drawing is before no it was completed. No way! Hi, Blackboard! <laughs> Mr. Squiggle, I like the Blackboard! Oh, hooray, hooray, it's Squiggle time! And about time too! Oh, grumpy are. Blackboard. I just want you to guess very early on, what do you think this Squiggle is going to be? A whale! It's very innocent of you, because if, to be completely honest, Peter. what I see is <laughs> cock and ball. But explain to me the, the large ball above. Y you're familiar with male anatomy, correct? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <never mind. laughs> Okay, it's a whale. What do you want, Liam? <laughs> uh -huh. Which is very tricky. It comes from Hannah and Ashley Sabin. <laughs> That's not Living fair. Now that you have the image Victoria. in my head. Uh, it's a very noble school. It's not getting much better, is it? It's a... There it is, Rebecca. <laughs> It's finished. It's a rocket. It's a big old dick rocket. It sure is, isn't it? What, what should it? I make of it now, Rebecca? Well, oh, is it something <laughs> with big ears? He just keeps making it worse. It's the moon with Stop! Nodder. Oh, is it? Is it a mouse? It's a mouse. It's a who, mouse. Who went to the moon because he heard that it was full of okay. green cheese. Oh. That was actually a really cool mouse with a very phallic shaped head. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why must the lines be down it? <laughs> yeah, why must it be a throbbing <laughs> mouse head? Why must it be exactly. A throbbing mouse? <laughs> Something else I used to watch a lot as a child was a game show called Catchphrase, and I think this is very art relevant. Do you have Catchphrase in America? We do. Excellent. So you understand what the, the general gist is. I... So contestants are given an image, and from that image, they need to guess what the catchphrase is. So for right. example, if I gave you this, can you tell me what the catchphrase is? I'm walking on sunshine. And there's also a meta layer to the game, which is a super catchphrase, which is gradually revealed on screen as you <gasps> get the assorted catchphrases. Are we going to play that game? On the right. Five seconds. Here we go. What do you think the super catchphrase is? Uh -oh. What do you think it is? Uh -oh. Okay, so I need to figure out what that banana jacking off is doing. Oh, not a banana. It's a Twinkie. Does that oh, make it easier? <laughs> they know what they're doing. No idea, sorry. No Snake charmer. What did he say? Snake charmer. Snake char. There is nothing in that that is snake charmer. He's being charming. Okay. 
if you had to choose. Yes. Who is your favorite 19th century French Impressionist painter? Da Vinci. Da Vinci? You are wrong. Oh, on, okay. I think every level imaginable. <laughs> I guess he was a painter. Wrong century, wrong country, <laughs> wrong movement. Man, I don't know. I do not follow art. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, I don't like any of them. Oh, um, no. Especially Monet, who is the Impressionist painter. Monet had a thing for haystacks. Really? Monet did a series of 25 paintings, each depicting the same haystacks at different times of day and at different times of year. I kind of love that. From an educational perspective, I think it's a pretty cool study of the effect of light on a subject. My husband's a photographer and he did the same thing where he chased this tree and different times of sunrise. He would always wake up early, go out and chase the fog over that tree. And he documented it over many days until he found the perfect one. And then the project was done and he moved on. Okay, that sounds really cool. It is cool! I think so! Your husband is a modern day Monet. Oh, a modern day Monet. It wouldn't surprise you at all to learn that these paintings paintings are so cool that one of them sold for $110 million. No, I don't understand art pricing. <laughs> that, that I don't get. More hilariously, protesters threw mashed potato at it. Well, that's unfortunate. Or do the potatoes just add to the artwork? Does it add to the experience? Does it add to the story? According is it to now you, more valuable? I'm sure the artist would think so. This is so much better. Why did I not throw potatoes on my art? Can you say it in French instead? Je suis la foi! Don't cut that. Je suis la foi. Oh yeah, you speak French, don't you? <laughs> Not well. <laughs> oh no! Il y a des pommes de terre sur ma peinture. I like how nasally you get when you're speaking French. As such a, a painting connoisseur, do you have a favorite painting? Yeah, Da Vinci drew the exploding TARDIS this one time. It was pretty impressive. Da Vinci seems to be like your <laughs> kryptonite. Because every time you mention him, even in a fictional context, all of the details are wrong. Van Gogh is who you meant to say, yeah? Van Gogh, that was it! Yeah, it was Van Gogh. Yes, Van Gogh, quite pip pip. <laughs> Being real about galleries, I think 95% of the stuff in those exhibitions, I give no shits about. <laughs> the exhibitions are so crowded that you get stuck into what I've labeled as an apathy loop. Uh -huh. To get to the painting that I want to see, I first need to stop and examine like five paintings I didn't want to see because of how the crowd is. You can't just cross the room. You, you can't like move on. Move with the flow. Right. So the vast majority of my time in a gallery is spent looking at stuff I have no interest in, but pretend Tending to be interested in because I've got nothing better to do. I can't just look at my phone while there's, you know, a masterwork in front of me. So I've got to stand there and go, yes, quite. You see the colors he used here. That blue square. What do you think he meant when he drew that square? But I'm convinced that's what almost everyone else in the gallery is like. Everyone has their things that like take their eye, but most people for most of the time are just pretending to be interested in what they're looking at. I mean, there's gotta be some cultured people in that room. Not you, of course, but some cultured people. It's like a game of very high class among us when you put right. me in an art gallery. You've gotta find the imposter. <laughs> That's right. And it's not difficult. Someone will make eye contact and you'll be like, why are they watching me? Did they notice? Did they notice that I don't really care? I used to go to the Archibald every year, which is Australia's premier portrait painting prize. Yeah, it's a lot of peas there. Come to think of it. It's like four <laughs> peas. One year, there was actually a Mr. Squiggle portrait entered into the Archibald. <gasps> so good! More accurately, it's a portrait of Mr. Squiggle's creator. He's a ventriloquist dummy. They drew him as a ventriloquist dummy. Look at his mouth. I think you're right. That or he's very old and wrinkled in a very convenient spot under the mouth. The wrinkles under the eyes and by the nose are really good wrinkles. That there at the mouth is deliberate. That's super cool. This is very good. I have a challenge for you. We are going to play a game. This game is called Child Work or Masterwork. <gasps> Yay! I love this game! I am going to give you two paintings, one of which was created by an extraordinarily famous artist, so famous that even you've heard of them, and the other one <laughs> was made by a 10-year-old child. Yes! There they are, both beautiful, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. happy, well, maybe not happy dogs, but dogs. Uh, 
Uh, I definitely think that doggo number two is the professional. Why is that? Why? Because you're playing a game, and so the simpler one's going to be the one by the professional. But I will say <laughs> that doggo number one does have very good eyes. So number two is the masterwork. Number one is the 10-year-old. Almost certainly. Lock it in. Murphy Napier, you are incorrect. Oh! And do you know why you're incorrect? Because I predicted you metagaming me. And I was like, <laughs> let's get a simpler one so that she'll think the simple one is the masterwork. And I'm trying to be tricky. No, I trick trick you. Did you yes, really do that? I absolutely did that. I really do like the second doggo more. No, well, I can't tell you much about the second dog because I'm not privy to its origin story. But I do know about the first. This is Angry Dog by Edvard Munch. Why is his tongue out? I can tell you why the dog's tongue is out, actually, because Please there's do. quite a detailed backstory to him. Is it because that's a piece of flesh that it's ripped off of a human person? The dog's name is Roll, and it belonged to Munch's neighbor. And one day, it bit Edvard on the leg. And using that incident as inspiration, Munch then decided to not only paint Roll the dog, but also do a series of sketches. <gasps> is better than the painting. The sketches are really good. I am disappointed that none of them made it to the final stage and we- He muzzled Doggo. Well, it bit his neighbor on the leg. Okay, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Would you like a second chance? Yes, yes, yes. This is a different game. Aww. It's called Appraise the Painting. I'm going to give you three paintings and you are going to tell me which one is more valuable. I'm so in. Here's the first one. This is called Blood Red Mirror by Gerhard Richter. It's so stupid. The second painting. This is Untitled by Blinky Palermo. Okay, next one. The final painting. This is One Mint Six by Barrett Newman. He didn't even color the lines. I want you to put these in order of which is the most valuable. That's stupid. This is a stupid game. <laughs> okay, red is worth the most. Coloring outside of the lines is worth the middle. And then blue on blue is worth nothing. You have a talent. <gasps> really? For getting it almost exactly as wrong as you could. <laughs> The value in this order is Blood Red Mirror is worth the least. It sold for $1.1 million. Oh, is that all? Followed by Untitled, the one that seems to have seriously offended you. No, Untitled is my favorite! Then why do you say it's worth nothing? Because typically I'm really wrong about this stuff. So if I deem it of value, then that means other people deem it of none. All right, that's an interesting strategy. Let's see if it pays <laughs> off. No, it didn't. Uh, Untitled <laughs> is worth $1.7 million. And the final painting, One Mint Six, is by far the most valuable of the three because it sold for just over $43 million. People gotta find a better way to use their money, man. Surely at that point, it just has to be money laundering. There is no way. <laughs> <laughs> that that painting carries that value. It's like a movie. If you peel back the back of the painting, then the real prize is actually in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stuffed with $43 million worth of high class drugs or something. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so this is like a, a long game scam. So they stuffed the back of the painting with the drugs and then they put it up for auction so that they could get it to change hands and they intentionally put it behind a really worthless painting. I love that idea. That would be so frustrating. It's like, all right, I'm going to go to this auction. I'm going to get my million dollars worth of drugs. No one's going to buy this shit painting for exactly. that. And then there's just one guy there who's like, yeah, but wouldn't it be funny if... <laughs> Two million, four million, ten million. Oh, that guy seems to really want it. I wonder how high I can make him go. The guy who's after the drugs is just like, I'm bankrupt, but I can't let him buy it because then he'll realize that there's drugs everywhere and I'll get arrested. Twenty million. <laughs> This is England, and I would what? like to tell you about one of my favorite art scandals of all time. Okay, I'm fairly certain you're not in England, but go ahead. I'm not, but this is, or it was, because we actually need to travel back in time to do it as well. So, right, picture this. We are back in the 1800s. Yes. In England, and Queen Victoria was the monarch at the time. Yes. Queen Victoria, at this point, is having quite a steamy relationship with Prince Albert. Okay. And I want to point out that being a prince does not make Albert the Queen's son. That's just a confusing That's thing okay. that happens in the English monarchy. <laughs> Got it. Let's let's pretend that you 
you are Queen Victoria, if you were in this intense, perhaps long distance, longing relationship with someone, what would you do? Like what, what, how would you service that relationship? Send a really bad painting. That's right, Murphy. You would send nudes. That is exactly <laughs> what you would do in this situation. Great. Due to having no internet, no phones, no cameras, Queen Victoria had a quote, secret portrait oh, no. for Prince Albert. And I don't know if we'll have to censor this for YouTube, but I'm about to show you this portrait in all of its smutty glory. Oh, that is the sweetest, scandalous photo I've ever seen. I know, by our standards these days, it's downright conservative. Those are some bare shoulders, Liam. She's, she's giving you the eyes, that's what's happening. He's off screen and he's getting the eyes. Oh yeah, that hair that's, that's tousled and half undone. That's scandalous. This would be the equivalent of King Charles texting a dick pic today. Yeah. This painting was actually considered so racy that Buckingham Palace locked it away for 150 years. No way. It's one of the deeper, darker secrets, yeah. Wow. Do you know that thing that we do with our faces? You know how we maneuver them to like, Go like this. Yeah, where we flex all of our muscles right around here. I know about that. What's it called? Smile. Smile, yeah. And <laughs> when was smiling invented? 1843. That, that, that late? I don't that know, recent? Liam. Just say the anecdote you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the iconic yellow smiley face was invented very recently in human history by a man named Ross Ball? That's so sweet though. That's such a charming face next to this guy that's like, why are you taking my picture? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but it does make sense because the yellow smiley face was invented in the post-World War II Cold War era. Uh -huh. And specifically because morale was very low at the State Mutual Life Assurance Company. And I think if I'd worked at a place called the State Mutual Life Insurance <laughs> Company, I'd have quite low morale as well. So they contacted Harvey, who was a freelance graphic designer, to design a fun button to boost morale at the Aww. company. And then 10 minutes later... 10 minutes! Took him exactly 10 minutes to do this. That's amazing. He basically gave birth to emojis in this moment. That that's amazing. I love that story. The company originally ordered a hundred buttons, but they became so popular that over the next decade, they'd sold 50 million. Now I want a button. Meanwhile, Harvey himself was paid a grand total of $45 for his 10 minutes of work. Unfair. Maybe, maybe not, because apparently he never regretted anything because he wasn't money driven at all. And he had this famous quote, which I really like, which was, I can only eat one steak at a time. And so he was fine with oh, it. I love that. Uh, still, give him, give him a uh, royalty. Is this an art? I would say no. And you would be wrong. Yeah. This is Fountain by Marcel Duchamp, who sourced a urinal, signed it, and plonked it in a gallery. Yeah, that seems right. What did it sell for, Liam? So Fountain never sold. However, it was subject to what are called a series of interventions, because many people saw Fountain at the gallery and saw it as an invitation to <gasps> participate in art. No, that can't be true. It is very true. No. Yeah. Ah! Several people have successfully urinated in fountain. No. Yes, they keep saying yes. In public, people have chosen to do this thing? Yes, many. So many people urinated in fountain that they had to start encasing it in glass. Stop it. But that didn't stop people. <gasps> There are cases of people just urinating on the glass instead, but one particular artistic legend by the name of Brian Eno. Legend isn't the word. Concocted a scheme to bypass the glass and get into the uh -huh. urine. So what he did was he filled a very thin tube uh -huh. with urine in advance Stop. and like lined his clothing Stop. with it. Stop! So it's affixed to his body. And when he got to fountain, he found a slight gap in the glass and just went and dipped in into the slack gap. This is why we don't have magic anymore. All the elves, all the dwarves, <laughs> all the wizards, they got tired of our nonsense and they left. This is why all of the elves left they middle left left yeah. because of that guy. What do you think the signature art of our generation is going to be? Oh, 
our generation, I feel like photography is... No, no, I'm just married to a photographer. I think the signature art of our generation is digital art. Things like video games and a lot of mangakas have switched to digital art and things like that, hey? Are you Canadian or do you just say hey? My, <laughs> my closest friends growing up were Canadian and it's just something I've never been able to drop. I think that our generation is going to be quite specifically remembered for memes. Interesting. As an artistic expression. Okay, so as far as just what the common man creates. And some memes are more well known than some extraordinarily famous works That's of art. That's absolutely now. true. Like the, um, the guy looking at the girl turning yeah, yeah, around. Yeah. Like, but also memes have the capacity to teach you a lot about yourself, at the very least. They've taught me a lot about myself. So you know how there are all sorts of personality tests dedicated to diagnosing you as well, like an INFP? <laughs> oh, a personality, things. right? I reckon and you could do the same thing with a meme. I need that test. For this test, we are using an old format called the advice animals. Beautiful. So which animal do you identify with most? Here we have courage wolf, bachelor frog, paranoid parrot, technologically impaired duck, sexually oblivious rhino, and socially awkward penguin. I want you to guess which one is me and I'll guess one, which one is you. I feel like I'm pretty easy, but yeah, let's go. Are you penguin? Of course I'm socially <laughs> awkward penguin. <laughs> the, the, my backup was gonna be parrot. Parrot? Paranoid parrot? Yeah, making sure. Okay, did I do that? Let me double check that. It's definitely socially awkward penguin. And I remember seeing those penguin memes in high school and going, oh my God, that is me. All of these memes are describing my life. <laughs> I love that. Okay, which one am I, Liam? Right, process of elimination. I don't think you're Courage Wolf. Mm. I feel like I would have noticed something like that by now. <laughs> I don't think you're Bachelor Frog because I feel like you're a lot cleaner. Mm. Oh, you know what? It's It's gotta be technologically impaired duck. You got it! It has to be, sure. <laughs> Yeah. We filmed together enough, I feel like that should have been really yeah, yeah, yeah. easy. You were pretty correct about me with Paranoid Parrot as well. Whenever I'm playing a game, I never save just once. I always double save me because too. I'm paranoid. Paranoid Parrot would be my second one as well. Do you think we'll ever get to the end of art? Will we ever 100% it? No. If meme can be considered an art, then people will always find a new type of art to create. You think we'll always find something new? There'll never be a state where everything that could be said has been said in all of the ways it could be said? No, I think people are chaotic enough that they'll find a way. <laughs> now, will it always be as great as, let's say, Da Vinci? No, it'll be memes and other sub subsequent things like that. So wait, who's Da Vinci again? Is he the French Impressionist painter Dude, who did the TARDIS exploding? I... At this point, he's a <laughs> meme in this video. Who's one painting that you do know of you despise. Yeah, <laughs> that seems right.